Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. It's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art. And I just opened some boxes of some new wood cutouts that just came in. People have been asking for different ones. We did some cool spring and Easter ones. But for me, anyway, it's almost time for camping. And I have some really adorable camping cutouts, wood cutouts to paint. So I'll show you those later on, but we're gonna paint one real quick this morning. Good morning, Sandy. So let me show you. I'm gonna just turn my camera. We're gonna um, quickly paint it up. I'm not sure exactly how I'm painting it, so I can't really tell you instructions as, until I go along. So take a look and watch, and we will do this cool camping sign. Okay. So this is a pretty cool cutout. It's a circle cutout. And it has all these dimensional pieces. And I'm going to bring you guys up on my page. So if you have any questions at all, just put them in the comments and I'll answer them as we go along. Um, I start camping in May and I absolutely love it. And I think that we have a lot of campers out there. So you might like this too. It's dimensional. So look at this. The pieces all come off. We paint them separately. The designs are already etched very lightly into the wood, which is kind of cool. So you don't have to worry about drawing on your pattern or where do things go. It's a light, light, light etching. So it's kind of convenient to just paint in, in the lines. It's like you're um, painting by numbers, <laughs> sort of. So I think you can all see that. Again, I didn't plan it. I literally just opened the boxes. So I'm going to wing it, but let's have fun and paint a little camping sign for our camp. I want to do it as a nighttime scene. So I'm gonna paint this whole background in a dark blue. I'm gonna move this camera a little bit so you can see it a little easier. I think that's a little better. So I really just pulled out some colors that I liked. Um, to get ideas of how I wanted to do this, I just pulled up some pictures on Google of vintage campers, because it's a little vintage camper. And you know those are always done in the cool pastel colors like turquoise or pink. So I pulled out some turquoise and pink there. I think I'll need some black as well, but I got silver for the tire, uh, the, the rims and the hitch and all that. I got some, a nice dark green there for the trees. Where it's going to be a night scene, our trees will be a little darker than we might do in a daytime scene. So I'm gonna get one coat on here. With the acrylics, as you know, sometimes it's a little transparent and we'll need two coats. So I'm going to quickly get this background done so that we can put a second coat and then I think I'll spatter it with stars as the background. So these signs are so much fun and they're so easy. You just really just follow along with the lines. So there, just a nice dark, it's a dark phthalo blue. I really like the phthalo blue and the phthalo green. They're a really pure pigment. You can mix so many colors from them and where you're starting with the dark, you could go lighter and, and you can go all over the place. Now, since I'm doing this quick to show you, I'm not gonna try to pick it up because it's wet and do the sides, but I would paint those little sides. So let's just let that piece dry and we'll work on the little cutouts that go onto this, which I just glue with E6000 or some sort of a heavy glue. I will glue those uh, pieces on. And I'm going to still shift you a little bit because I don't think you can see the whole thing. There. Okay, so now we have our little pieces. And really, I am on the fly painting these. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted Happy Camper to be, what color. But it's going on a dark background, so it's, it would either maybe be yellow. You know what? We could put a, a moon in that sky, which might be kind of cool. So even if it's going to be yellow or white, I'm just going to paint it white first. The yellow is so transparent that you would... It would take so many coats to try to cover this. I always start, if I'm doing something yellow on these wood cutouts, I start with white. It gives me a, a more opaque base. And you'll see that the yellow, if we do it yellow, will cover so much better. So we'll just quickly do this. And like I said, we probably need two coats on most of these things that we're painting. So I'm just not worrying really too much about how I'm putting this on with the exception of I don't want big thick globs so I'm putting the paint on with the brush and then just spreading it out so it's smooth. We just don't want any ridges and bumpy areas. Okay, say good morning when you come on. Tell me where you're watching from. Hi, Denise. Yes, we. I have a seasonal camper in Maine right on the coast so I can actually see the ocean. And I have to say, I love to camp, but I have a million dollar view and I cannot wait. We open up at the beginning of May, so 
And I'll show you later on, I'll put pictures of the other camp um, cutouts that I got. Good morning, Bev. And Bev's going to be camping this year with me. I can't wait. Hi, Barbara. Yeah, it's going to be so fun. Okay. I really um, want to do a little white on the cutout piece here. And, and what's even cooler is, okay, this is a cutout piece, but look, it's even more dimensional because we have these little guys that will be painted and, and glued on after. Again, with something like an E6000 or, or whatnot. But my camper is going to be, I think I'll do uh, the white up top and the turquoise here. This is going to be a little line of flags. But you could also do it as a little line of lights, little, you know, you put those little camp, those little lights up at your camp. And you guys are good to pop on and watch me this morning. I really did not plan this. I have to be to work in a little while, but I thought, I can't wait to see this painted. I've been waiting for these guys to come, so. And we'll just paint in the white spots first. Now, a little bit of the hitch here in the center of the little tire will be silver. I don't exactly know, should I undercoat the silver with the white to make it show up? So what I'll do is when I paint that on, if I find it's too transparent, I'll just paint it white first. And again, we'll just do as many coats as we need. Usually two is, is sufficient, but uh, if we need a few more, we just let it dry. That's the important thing. If you're putting multiple coats on, let it dry really well between coats. If you don't, you're just wiping off the paint you put on and it's really a waste of time. So really let that paint dry in between and it dries really pretty fast. If you're impatient, like sometimes I am, I keep a hair dryer handy and I'll just, or a heat gun and I just give it a little zap. But yeah, camping is pretty soon. Although we are, um, I'm in Massachusetts, it's crazy here. We had 70 degrees about a week ago and yesterday we had snow, so you can, uh, the New England weather, when they say, if you don't like the weather, wait a minute, it's true. We're supposed to be up to 70 again on Tuesday, so. Yeah. And again, I'm going to kind of look at, I'm going to peek at the comments, so if you have any questions, let me know. I will probably, um, as soon as I get a second, put these pieces up, give them a price. You could do kits if you would like with the paint included in the brushes, but um, if you have paints and whatnot and you want just a little wooden piece, just let me know. I will, like I said, get them priced out. I literally just um, opened the box. Good morning, Jimmy. Have a good day. I guess I won't see you today, but I'll see you tomorrow. So you'll be out with your bees today. I um, have a cute gnome, a bee gnome I want to paint up for you guys too soon. Okay, I'm going to try to get these little bits and pieces done here. My door, I'm trying to figure out what color do I want my door. Let me do these little bits first. This is going to be, just for fun, I'm going to do the little um, wheel cover thing in turquoise. I just, like I said, I googled a bunch of pictures of vintage campers, and I'm going to use that as a little guide, but I'm going to use my imagination too. Whether that is supposed to be white like the camper or not, I think it'll look nice with a little pop of turquoise in there. So anyway, I want to make sure you guys can see. Yep, you can see what I'm doing. If you have a problem and I'm putting things out of your sight, let me know and I can move the camera. The little center of the door window and this little window, lots of times for windows, I just do a light blue. So I'm going to just grab, take a little uh, blue into my white here and paint that little window. And because it's going on here, we don't need to paint this bit. We're just gonna paint this and glue it on. And another good thing about acrylic paints, if you have a mistake or you painted this a color and you didn't really like it, you could certainly paint right over it afterwards after it's dry. So no, don't worry too much about getting things perfect. A little bit of... Um, Yep, this window we do see, so I'm going to just paint the bottom of this. And can you see how well your brush just glides along inside those lines? You don't have to be real careful. You, the, the little line, you don't even feel it, but it does sort of stop your paintbrush when you're going to go, you know, over, over it. It's a little window. I'm going to take a little white on my brush and maybe just a little bit of a highlight there. And that's that. I am going to do turquoise up here. I know I'm jumping all around, but as long as we get all the bits and pieces painted, I think we're fine. Yeah. 
and I'll have some pictures of this when it's finished. Lots of times, well not lots of times, all the time when I do have a kit for you to paint with, I always make a photograph, take a photograph of the finished piece, include it with the kit as well as a QR code to this video. So when you're painting, you don't have to uh, try to remember how I did it. You could QR and go right to YouTube and see the video again and use it while you're painting. You can stop and start it and work at your own pace, which is kind of fun. Sometimes it's good just to watch it like we're do like you're doing this morning and get an idea of how it's done, get some ideas of the colors you'd like to use, and go from there. These are being uh, covered with the little glued bit, so you don't have to be super duper careful around the edges of those. And you know what's really cool? If you feel like, oh, I, I don't really have the control to do all the detail or, or you don't want to, you could use um, some paint pens afterwards for little decorative touches, which I'll show you. I have some handy here, which I really love. They're a little different than the Sharpies because they're more, they are actual paint um, inside the pen. So it's a little uh, thicker and it looks really just like you painted it with a brush. So they're kind of fun. You can get those paint markers anywhere. I use the Posca markers, but uh, there's all sorts of brands and I think they all work pretty well. I'll get this little bit around the window done. I love these turquoise and pink, these mid-century, these fun vintagey colors. Okay, these little areas there, we'll just scoot the paint in. Not being, like I said, too, too careful because I'm doing a second coat. Hi, Denise. Bees and gnomes. Yeah, I, ha I had it on the table and I moved it because I was too excited about painting the campers. I should have um, actually painted that, but I will um, very soon and you can see a picture. Okay. Still letting my big blue circle dry. When that's dry, I'll put the second coat. I might as well put some details on my trees. So it's pretty simple on the trees. We know the trunks are going to be brown, so we'll just get a little brown on there. And on these cutout bits, you don't have to paint the edges. Because they're kind of laser cut, they're very they're brown on the edge already. So I, I just paint what I need to on the tops and, and don't worry about the edges. The big circle, I'm going to paint the edge, so I just want to finish it off nicely. But uh, these little bits, you're never going to see the edges, the sides of. Okay, and that's pretty pretty covered. I don't think we'll even need a second coat on those little brown trunks. And the trees themselves, I have a very dark phthalo green, like I said here. It's too dark to use that way, but I love the greens we get when I take a little bit of yellow and, and mix it with that. And because I've got that dark shade, you can see when these dry, I can really shade, like the back one could be a little darker. Uh, I can make it a little brighter on the one that's in the front, make it pop, make it come forward a little bit. But uh, let's just get a coat of green on here to start. And then we can worry about shading and highlighting and all that good stuff. And what's cool is because these little um, letter, the lettering is cut out. We don't have to worry about trying to paint it on just right. Uh, we just paint it and stick it on. It's so fun. Okay, our trees are coming along. You can see how quickly the rest of the paint is drying. It really doesn't take too long. So we'll do our trees. We'll do these little bits. I can't wait to show you how we put the stars on the big background part. And you could very well paint that with a nice bright blue sky with clouds and sun. You could make it you guys put your own spin on these things. I like to show you a way that I do it, but the fun uh, part is seeing everybody's take on it and everybody painting it a little different. So there, we will let that dry, those trees. Um, I'm gonna try the silver on the uh, hitch in those bits there to see if that's gonna cover. Like I said, if it doesn't, we just base coat it in white, but I think it's covering really well. So never mind, we'll just cover it with silver. I'm thinking this is all part of the little hitch. So we're going to do all this silver in the back here. And I'm working on, people had seen the bike painting in some photos I had put up recently for the, um, uh, this, like the nice spring, it's a good spring picture of the bike with the basket and some flowers in it. I want to rework the one that you saw on the site. So I'm doing it a little different and I'm working on my iPad and I kind of design it that way and change it up and figure out the colors. I might even show you that process. I'll, I'll post some pictures later how I actually do that. So I'm excited to this weekend 
you know, get a new schedule of classes of paintings up for you all. So that'll be coming along in a, in a little while. Oh, you know what I did? I did a boo-boo. I'm painting that little thing and I don't need to because it needs to be this. So let's paint the part we really need to paint. And I'm going to grab some black because we do need black now for this little tire. See what happens when I talk and I paint at the same time? Okay, I love the way that silver is covering, and there's no reason why you couldn't afterwards go back and add some glitter or something if you wanted to. Okay, now I'm going to grab some black paint. Just, I have some right here. Just to paint that little outside bit of that tire. And we have the little awning piece there. We're going to think I will uh, alternate a couple colors and make that striped, maybe white and pink. And again, you can see how that little line sort of guides your brush a little bit. It's uh, It really makes for an easy, uh, fun paint project when you don't have to think too much and trace and worry about where the lines go. It's all done for you right here on this little piece. This is a little piece. It's, I'm afraid it's gonna like fly away while I'm painting it, but uh, it's okay. Right, and I did put my finger in that silver, so I'll fix that. Okay, I'm just wiping down. I see some little ridges, so you just again want it a smooth coat of paint. So I just kind of smooth those out a bit, and now I'll touch up my little fingerprint there. Okay, so we'll let this dry over here, and I am going to put a second coat on my Happy Camper writing. Uh, I think I will keep that white. I don't know if I want to introduce yellow to this. I, I want to, I sort of like to keep a color palette sometimes, a little smaller color palette, and tie it all together instead of throwing in every color under the sun. Uh, I think when you have a little palette that you've started with, some colors you like, some colors that uh, complement each other, it makes a more, a more cohesive painting. So I do try to be a little conscious, conscious of my color palette. I think the bright yellow would clash a little bit. If you were to use a yellow, maybe mix it with some white and have a lighter shade. But I'm going to go with white, and I may even do some little polka dots on these letters. I love polka dots and stripes and introducing those elements to my illustrations and my paintings. All right, so second coat of white may be enough. Sometimes the wood... Uh, the edges, especially where they're lasered, sort of bleed through. So I just eyeball it, and if it looks like it needs another coat afterwards, then we will certainly go ahead and do that. So what is everybody up to for the weekend? It's Saturday. It's, I was off the last two days. I had a wedding, and um, so it, it seemed like that was my weekend, and, and now it's the weekend again. So cool. Okay, the little doorway. I'm going to do that in the pink, I think. Yeah since I'm using that pink. I have a pink out. It's a pretty hot pink, a pretty Pepto-Bismol pink. I'm going to lighten it up with some white. Hey, Barbara, you want to buy this piece? Yeah, I'll let you know. I'll get the kits made up, and I will get the pricing out there on the page later today, so keep an eye on it. And I'm going to just mix a little bit of this pink with some white. I just don't want it to be quite so bright. Not really a pink girl, but I do love pink in my paintings. Not a big pastel wearer of pastel colors or pink, but in the paintings, I love it. I'm gonna switch over to my little brush here. I'm just using a variety of synthetic uh, brushes, not super expensive brushes. They're the uh, synthetic brushes that you find in any of the craft stores. They're, like I said, the price is right on them. Just take care of them. Just keep them washed out. Do as I say, not as I do. These should be in water and rinsed out. But I know I'm painting rather fast this morning, and I'm using the same colors for multiple coats, so I will rinse them after I am done. But give them a good rinse with some soap and water after your painting session, and they'll last a long time for you. I'm using a variety of flats and rounds. There's no right or wrong way. Do them. Do whatever you are comfortable with. Experiment with the different brushes, and there's no, like I said, you don't, there's no brush you have to use for any special thing. You use what's comfortable. If you're comfortable with a little tiny brush or a big brush, it's all your, it's all your, uh, for your painting experience. So that's, I think I like that pink. Okay, I'm going to do stripes on here. 
So why don't I start with the white first and then we'll do the pink. All right, so every other we'll just do a little white stripe. And again, this is a great spot where these little etched lines come in so handy. Is anyone gonna be doing some painting this weekend? Any fun projects? I'd love you to, to hear about them or share them. I know some people are still working on my, I did a class, I don't know, I think it was last Monday maybe, and some people have not painted yet from the video. And so that'll be a fun project and I'd love to see those pictures. If you look up on the page, you'll see some that, some of my painters have already posted and they all look fabulous. Yeah, there's that. And since I have this in my hand, we'll do another coat of the turquoise here. Now it's covering really nicely. Can you see how much nicer that's covering? Second coat. Yeah. So when I do my classes, I, I let you know that they're coming up. I do them live. They're live on Facebook here. They're live on YouTube. But they're always um, downloaded afterwards and uploaded. So do not fear. Pop in and just watch the class if you want because you can always watch the video later and start it and stop it and work at your own pace. So, so uh, when you see the advertised classes, know that they always are uh, up after the class somewhere on YouTube. You can follow me on YouTube, uh, Tinker's Cart Art, and you'll see me live there and you'll see all the classes I've done so far. You'll also see them here on the Facebook page if you scroll back. And if you ever have any questions, even after the fact and you're watching a replay, please just uh, send me a message and I can answer any questions you have at that point. I always keep an eye on the page here. So anything you have an inquiry about, just let me know. All right, to get into these little bits over here, I'm going to go back to my smaller brush. I'm just spreading out again. They were a little bit uh, streaky and a little bit, the paint was a little thick. So again, I just use my dryer brush and smooth out afterwards. That is just about where we want it for the top of the camper. Got a little on my window there. If you find you have a little boo-boo like that, I'm just taking a little clear water on my brush and just scooping away that turquoise paint. You can do that while it's wet. If it got by you and it's dry, you can certainly just paint over it. Okay, I'll do these little pink bits on here while we've got the pink paint right here. The other painting, um, there's one that's like a cutout love with the camper. I think it's got s'mores sticks. I just, like I said, I opened the box so quick. I'll show them to you. And then there is a fun little flamingo. We have a lot of flamingo decor at our campground. Who doesn't love the pink flamingos? Yeah, flamingos I think are going to be a cool, well, they're always a popular icon, but a little fun fact is I'm in Central Mass and in Clinton, and I did live in Leominster for a little while. That's a nearby town. And that is where the pink flamingo plastic yard ornaments were invented. So they are known for that. And it was a couple, it was a man named Don Featherstone invented those. Uh, Leominster's a big, or all around here is a big plastics manufacturing being done. And I believe he probably worked or owned one of those companies and came up with the pink flamingo. So every time I see those, we have a little bit of a tie to us here. And here's a funny and adorable thing. They always, uh, the, the Mr. and Mrs. Featherstone always dressed alike and she made all their clothes. It was so adorable. They're little like Hawaiian kind of shirts and dresses and, and you see pictures and, and they always dressed alike. It was so cute. So that's our tie here in New England, in Massachusetts to the pink flamingo. And I'm going to do some, uh, I've got some wooden signs I'm going to stencil on and paint some flamingos uh, soon. So we're going to do some cool, fun flamingo things. Okay, so this is a second coat of the green just to get it covered. I'm going to let it dry and then I'll show you how we can do the back trees in the back a little darker just to make the front one pop. Okay, this is all covered with our little wooden door here. This is covered here. We need a little silver for our rear bumper. There's that. That's all covered now with our tire. And the turquoise is kind of sinking in a little bit, so I'm gonna do even a third coat on, oh, wrong brush. A third coat on this little, uh, I'm gonna call it a wheel, wheel well, but it's not. It's like a little um, bumper over the, over the thing. All right, so the blank bits here are being covered by another wood piece. 
Everything at this point is covered. We just need second coats here and there. So let's move this aside, get this big round piece back, and we'll do our second coat of blue. Get that nice dark sky. And then we'll put our stars on it. You know what's fun about starry skies? We do them in our canvas painting and all sorts of things. And sometimes when I do my classes, people put little things like shooting stars back there. You could do a constellation, something that might have meaning to you. So remember, every time you do these pieces that I'm showing you how I paint them, put your own spin on it and uh, change things up and add things that are personal and meaningful. And then it's unique and one of a kind and special to you or to someone that you're giving it to as a gift. Just using a big wide uh, three quarter inch brush here. You could use your big chip brush if you wanted, any kind of a big brush, a sponge brush if you had it. After it's finished, because these signs do go outside lots of times, I do put a little gloss finish on. Sometimes I just spray it. I have a Mod Podge high gloss spray. If you wanted to protect it and not have it glossy, you could just put a matte or a satin spray on, or you could just use the brush on. I have Mod Podge, but there's Krylon and all sorts of other brands. So let's move that aside. When that dries, I'll show you a fun technique to putting stars on things. Morning, Lena. How are you today? Nice to see you again. I love it when people pop on and join me. So I'm gonna rinse that brush off there pretty good, but afterwards, like I said, I'm gonna give it a nice um, cleaning. I'm gonna put another coat of pink on here. Just one more, I think we'll do it. It'll be fine. And remember, you could paint your name on the door, uh, welcome, keep your, keep your, uh, Keep thinking when you're painting of different things you can do that are just not what I did, but just so that you could add and make it fun. Okay, that is good for our little door. I might paint a little heart on it later. I like when I do windows to put these little streaks like I've done here, a little bit of white on there. Just like kind of at, a, at an angle, I sort of just do this sort of thing. So I'm going to do that on this little door. Just little finishing touches, nothing... Nothing huge, but uh, that. These guys look okay. I do want to maybe put some dots on them. We'll do that last in case I, I want to see it all put together before I do that. All I'm going to do now is make sure I've got enough coverage in all the little uh, bits and pieces I painted. A little more white on that just to brighten it up. You can see how the wood sort of bleeds through a tiny bit, so that's why we're doing another coat. Okay, almost there. Can you believe? These are pretty fun and pretty quick. These are great if you get some girlfriends together and you want to have your wine and a little chat and you can be painting at the same time. They're fun little projects to do with your friends. Kids love them too. The kits are all put together so the kids could go right to town pretty easy because of the cutout shapes and everything for them. I did want to put little flags here. You know, sometimes you see those little flag banners. But like I said, you could also put lights. I'm just going to freehand those, and let's see, it would be something like, I don't want to put my hand in any wet paint, but it's mostly dry. We'll do one more coat of white here, but where I want to put my hand down, I'll wait, do that in a minute. So we're going to just do something like this. Yeah, now fill them in. Not worrying very much. I'm not going to sketch them on first. You could. You could sketch them on with a little piece of chalk or a pencil if you want them perfect. And, and what I love about these things is you don't really need to have them perfect. It, it's not machine made. You want it to look handmade. And again, you can go back after and touch up anything there. This is a little spot where you could use your paint markers if you wanted to. Let me show you those in a second. Let me just fill in this. Now, I may make every other one of these pink. But because uh, I have that darker blue underneath, I'm still going to paint them all white, and I can always go over with another color, which I may, I may. I don't, like I said, I haven't planned out this very well. I just popped on and on a whim just thought I'd paint it. I really wanted to get some painting done today. Okay, so these are the paint markers. They come in all colors. This is a black one. Um, it's a Posca marker, and you can hear, like, you need to shake it up 
There's a little metal ball inside that marker, uh, mixing that paint up before you use it. They come in a smaller size, and I, I have my white and black right here handy, but I do have them in all colors, and they have pretty good coverage. All right, now I have dragged on some green onto my turquoise, so I'm gonna give that a quick little go over. And it does look a little bit like the brown's bleeding through in places, so I, since I have the turquoise in the brush, I'm gonna just give it a little a little extra coverage. A little door there. Here. And then with my little brush, just this little corner is hard to get into with that big brush. Then I'll do another coat of my white. Let me clean my brush off of that, though. Whenever you're uh, switching colors and cleaning off your brush, the only thing I can tell you that's important is just wipe off all the water you might have picked up. You don't want to go into your white now and have it all watery and streaky. So I, I rinse my brush off, but I always dry it off on a paper towel before I go into my paint. Okay. And you can see it just gets a little brighter each time, a little better coverage. White is the one color that you will need to probably do three times. I'm so happy I discovered these wooden cutouts. They're so much fun. I do a lot of wooden signs with stencils on them. And some of these cutouts are nice, actually glued to the wooden board that I do. I have some that look barn boardy and pallety. And these little guys painted and glued on are fun as well. Okay, so that's that. There. Looking pretty good. Let's play around with our trees. And then we will, um, actually, these little guys are dry. They dried pretty fast, so I want to pop on their second coat, then we'll do our tree. And just a quick second coat on them. You could even, if you want to plan it, put the number of flags in for your last name and put a letter on each flag. That might be fun. You could put polka dots on them, stripes, plain. There's a million ideas. And if you're stuck, just go to Pinterest or Google. Like I said, I got some ideas just by Googling vintage campers. I love these. My first camper was a little 18-foot Shasta with the little wing up here. It was so adorable. Tiny, but adorable. This was before that vintage campers were the big rage. And had I kept it, it would probably be worth a lot of money. But anyhow, there we are. Let me see how that looks. On I'm watching myself here for a second, looking at your comments, and and I I like the flags. It's it's very interesting. Not so much these little wood cutouts, but if you're doing a painting, and you think, oh, it's a little wonky or something's wrong. What is the what is the issue here? Put it in a mirror, and look at it, or take a picture. So like when I'm looking here at the video as it's going, I can really see um, different things, and it would really help if you have a painting that's a little off. Put in, look at it through the mirror, and it's funny how sometimes the issue just jumps right out at you. And it's important not to be too critical of your work. This is fun. The canvas painting is fun. It's not serious business. Don't, you know, get too bogged down with, it doesn't look like yours, it doesn't look like my neighbor's. I would paint this or a painting again, and it wouldn't look like the same painting. So it's not supposed to. Just have fun with it. I am making up a darker green here. Took a little tiny bit of black just to add some opaqueness. And so this tree is in the back, so we're going to just darken it up a little. And then the second step would be to lighten up the front tree, and you will see how that is going to make it look like it's coming forward. Just a little shading and a little highlighting. And I think I'll keep these trees in the back a little dark. I'm going to do a little more detail on this front one. That's too dark, that's black practically. So let's just um, get a little hair in there. Get that off and let's lighten this big black dot glob up. Okay. Let's lighten that up there. I'm gonna get a little yellow back. While your colors are wet, is a good time to be able to blend and shade and highlight. Sometimes if it's dry, I'll come back and, and re-wet it. But those are just background trees, so they're fine where they are. I'm gonna go a little brighter with the yellow on this front tree. 
want it to be green still, but br brighter. Okay. Now, sometimes the yellow's a little transparent, and we'll add a little white and get even a lighter shade. But for now, I'm just getting that whole tree in. Can you see? It's just a little bit more yellow-green, a little lighter. You can see it along this edge. It's going to come forward now because it's against that dark background. I'm using strokes that are... I'm going to start now going kind of from the bottom and going up the way the branches would fall. Not terribly important on a little cutout like this, but if we were painting a tree on a canvas in a landscape, you'd start here and work your way up so the branches, as you go up, lay on top of the branches underneath. Like if you're painting a Christmas tree or something, you want it to lay that way. So what I'll do now, and you can really see, is I'm taking that light green, but to make it pop, I'm putting a tiny bit of yellow. I mean, I'm sorry, excuse me, a tiny bit of white. And I'm going to do these strokes starting at the bottom. Can you see? It looks like the branches. I'm just curving them on the side. I'm getting straighter here. I'm going to curve them here. It's a little detailed for a little wood cutout, but I want to show you the technique. And if you were painting a tree, like I said, a Christmas tree or something, I'm layering now the strokes as I go up. Adding a little bit of white to keep it so that we can see it. I'm curving here, curving, getting a little straighter, curving, and just working to the tippy top. If you start at the top and work down, your branches would not lay nice like that in natural. You'd have them all choppy. So always start at the bottom and just give it some texture. How's that look? I'm going to see it in the, in the video. And I think that shows up enough. It's bright and it shows up. If it didn't, a little more yellow, a little more white, go right over it. And I like that idea. So I don't want to lighten my background trees up too much, but I want to just give them a few little strokes like that. Not a lot, just, just something. Let's see how it looks if we just do. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be bright like that because I don't want it to compete with that tree in the front. But I want it just to have a little bit of texture, I guess, more than anything. I don't want to see the streaks. I'm just doing a little texture. You can barely see that, but it will just give it the illusion of some branches. There. Enough. I'm dying to see how these look on top here, so let's, let's put them kind of together. We're not going to glue them now, but you can at least see what's happening here. And again, when you put a little gloss on it, if you choose to, it does brighten it up a little bit, so it's kind of cool. All right, there. I'll glue these together later. And your markers you can use when your paint is good and dry. You don't want to use your paint markers while the paint is wet. If you hit the wet paint with your marker, you're going to ruin the tip. This looks um, a little wet still, so I'm going to wait. But you can kind of see if you wanted to go on here after with white or black. I'll show you on the back of this just for the heck of it how you can get a nice detail line. You can do all sorts of designs if you want to do dots on something if you wanted to outline you want to outline these guys the each letter which maybe i'll do something like that later i don't know but when this is good and dry you can go on with these markers and do all your details that you'd like i would maybe outline these flags as well but again it has to be good and dry so i'm not going to worry about that let's go and do the stars on our background it is not completely dry but that does not matter because we're just going to spatter stars. So I want to get all my pieces away. When we start spattering the, sc the stars, those little dots fly everywhere. They'll be all over. So make sure you move your pieces away that you are going to, uh, from where you're spattering. And I need to grab an old toothbrush. So let me grab that. It's a really fun technique, and it really is just going to be using an old toothbrush. And I'm going to get some clean water. So I water down the white paint. I water that down. I'm going to pull it over here because I want to just mix it. So it's a little bit of water, the white paint pulled aside, mixed up. Sometimes you don't know till you start spattering if it's going to be the right consistency. So you just go ahead and do it. I just got a couple little bits of water there. And again, ideally, I would let this dry completely first, but I want to show you the technique. So let me just uh, start. So it's just the old toothbrush and you just, it's messy, but you're just going to spatter this way. This is fabulous for snow on your snowman scenes. See how much fun that is? Sometimes it's hard to stop. So I'm going to stop. 
And that's it, simple as it is to put your nice starry sky. I do go back sometimes and make some little uh, dots here and there. I just need a little something with a fine tip, maybe the back end of a brush, I'm taking some of my white paint, and I can just give myself some bigger little dots here and there, just because they would be bigger stars and whatnot. Again, this is all up to your own taste, what you want your background to look like. I thought these uh, pastel colored campers would look great on a night sky. There's nothing nicer than you're out camping and there's no city lights around. It's really dark and those stars are just popping. And you can watch for the shooting stars. So you could put a moon in here if you wanted. I am not. I, I think it's got enough going on with the camper and the writing. I don't think we need a moon. But you could add it if you want. You know what would be fun? Add a little spaceship, a little UFO. Really, use your imagination. I always go off on a tangent, but uh, there we are with our, our night sky. I'm going to pop my camper on there, even though it's wet, because I just want to show you guys, and mostly I want to see what it looks like too. So there. I'm going to put my happy camper like this. I think my happy camper needs something besides just being white like that. I think... I'm going to try it, and if I don't like it, I can always go back. I was sort of thinking of maybe putting some pink polka dots on my writing. That might be crazy. Like I said, you can always go back and change it up. What do you guys think? Polka dots? And I'm doing it simply with the back end of a brush again. They're bigger polka dots, so I found a brush that had kind of a wider circle on the back end. And I just go along and do that. I can't decide. Let's see. I think I like the polka dots. What do you guys think? Polka dots, yay or nay? <laughs> Thank you, Bev. I love the tree. Thanks, Barbara. Okay. Well, I just, like I said, was dying to see what it kind of looked like. You saw how I did it pretty much. I'm going to wash my brushes out now. I'm going to leave that for a minute and see how I like it. I'm going to add a little decor to decorations maybe to the flag and, and whatnot. So what I will do is later on, I will finish this up properly, take some photos and show you. But if you would like to paint one, you'll have this video to go by. And